Hello friends, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and if this is your first time here, welcome to Booked and Busy. Today's video are today's video we're going to be talking about the 12 series that i plan to prioritize and marathon in 2023 so when i say prioritize i mean that i plan to read these series in their entirety from beginning to end in the year 2023 most likely i'll be reading them back to back some of them because they're for reading longs it'll be a little more spread out but for the majority i plan to read all 12 of these series in 2023 so let's just dive right into it shall we of the 12 11 are fantasy and one is a sci-fi i'm gonna start with this one the first one we have um under the northern sky series is a trilogy the first book being the wolf the second book being the spider and the third book being the cuckoo um planning on marathoning this in the winter this one is about this world where um imagine after the ice age or whatever more than one um human species survived so we got homo sapiens and then we've also got the neanderthals and what if these two groups of people evolved into two separate societies and then hundreds and hundreds of years later what if they went to war that's like the premise of this one so on the back it says war rivalry and honor in a world where the fiercest enemies are always closer than they seem beyond the black river among the forests and mountains of the north live an ancient race of people their lives are measured in centuries not decades they revel in wilderness and resilience and they scorn wealth and comfort by contrast those in the south live in the moment their lives more fleeting they crave wealth and power their ambition is limitless and their cunning unmatched when the armies of the south float across the black river the fragile peace between the two races is shattered on a lightning struck battlefield the two sides will fight for their people for their land and for their very survival i love war fantasy um i've read like the first two chapters of this and i'm really intrigued by the writing style uh it was just completed so now i think it's like the perfect time to prioritize this series next up we've got a fan favorite on the channel this is assassin's state by robin Hobb, book one in the fit and the fool trilogy this is the final series in the realm of the elderlings so this is books 14 through 16. um in this series follows Fitz as an old man in his 60s or he starts out at 45 i read like the first 130 pages of this so far he starts out as a 45 year old man and it follows him in his golden years and what he gets up to um so this takes place about 10 to 15 years after the end of the tawny man trilogy when we first meet Fitz way way long ago in the farseer trilogy he is a young boy uh four or five years old he gets dropped off at the keep because his his maternal grandparents or grandfather doesn't want him anymore and decides that he's going to be his father's responsibility he is the bastard son of the king in waiting fits uh chivalry farseer when his father finds out that he's on his way to him he abdicates the throne and leaves him to go to the countryside in order to protect Fitz and Fitz is raised by the stable master named Burridge who takes care of the horses hounds and hogs and he raises him up until the point where he's about 10 years old and the king Shrew takes an interest and decides that because Fitz can navigate the lowborns because he's a bastard and the highborns because he's the son of the prince he is able in the in the perfect position to be able to become the royal assassin and so we follow Fitz throughout the course of his life from four or five years old in the beginning to six years old at the end and his journey i know this one is going to be heartbreaking uh, and i'm so ready to be destroyed next up we've got foundational text of fantasy one of if not the most popular fantasy series of all time and that is the lord of the rings by jrr tolkien i don't know anything about this really i know that there's a quest there are some hobbits, there's a wizard, and there's a ring. That's the extent of my knowledge. I did read um, The Hobbit last, either earlier this year, I think. So let's see what it is about. For all y'all know, I've also never seen the movie, so I really don't know what it's about, really. It says Sauron sauron the dark lord has gathered to him the rings of power by the means by which he will be able to rule the world all he lacks in his plan for dominion is the ruling ring which has fallen into the hands of the hobbit bilbo baggins in a sleepy village in the shire young frodo baggins finds himself faced with an immense task as the ring is entrusted to his care he must leave his home and make a perilous journey across the realms of middle earth to the crack of doom deep inside the territories of the dark lord 
There he must destroy the ring forever and foil the Dark Lord and his evil purpose. It says, the definitive edition of this epic work of adventure is now for the first time in its history presented together with the author's own paintings, drawings, and illustrations. So this is a gift from one of my patrons, Ellie. Um, so I'm really excited to see what all the fuss is about, to be honest. Um, yeah, I know this is like one of the most well-developed worlds in fantasy and Middle Earth is kind of what every author is really striving to recreate with the amount of depth and detail. So I'm excited to see if I think it's, you know, worth the hype. Next up, we've got the first Busy Bee Book Club read along for this year, and that is the Five Warrior Angels series by Brian Lee Durfee. First book being The Forgetting Low. We're going to be reading this one from January to March, co-hosted by Leanna from Leanna's Library. This one... There's not much information on this here synopsis. It says, Welcome to the Five Isles, where war has come in the name of an invading army of Sor Sevier, a merciless host driven by the prophetic fervor of the angel prince Eros toward the last unconquered kingdom of Golgana. That's absolutely it. That's all the, the synopsis says. Um, I like war fantasy. I've heard that it's really epic and i'm excited to get into it also brian lee durfee makes youtube videos so if you want to check him out on the internet he makes like bookish writing video like bookish videos and some videos on writing so also the chapters like have names it says like nile the fatherless are deemed by nature unholy nile desperate souls all uh galt albrecht where hope dies uh so i'm excited to get into this one um i've seen only a few people in the fantasy sphere read and talk about this series but i'm really excited to get into it either way and i hope you join us for the read along next up we've got a blood and bone by john gwen this is the spin-off series to the faithful and the fallen which is my favorite book of last year and one of my favorite series this takes place i want to say 130 or 150 years after the concluding events of that series there is one character that was in that series that's also in this series but this i can't really say what this is about because it's about the repercussions and what the world looks like after the great war between good and evil and things start to stir once again um i've heard that i think it's a time of courage is like john gwen's best book um so i'm excited to see where this story takes us this first one is pretty short for a john gwen so i'm intrigued and this is only a trilogy oh yeah so i don't know if i've been saying how many books are in each series but this is a trilogy this is a trilogy this is kind of one book but also a trilogy and this is also a trilogy and then the next stack, we've got the Dandelion Dynasty first book being The Grace of Kings. It's a quartet. This first book is like a prequel to the main story that Ken Liu wanted to tell. And this first book is like a retelling of like the Sean Jin contention, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this is deemed silk punk by the author. So even like knowing what the, this first book is about, it doesn't really give you that much information on like what the series is beyond that because the, it takes place uh, over the course of, I want to say of hundreds of years or, you know, a, a, a healthy amount of time because we see that the, we see the world and the political situation and the families and all of that, um, progress quite a bit. So this synopsis says the meaning of justice changes in a revolution and the archipelago of Dara was once divided into seven kingdoms with shifting alliances and constant battles, a tempest of diverse dialects and cultures. When a relentless king united the seven lands into one empire, some thought it would bring pre bring peace and end to the turmoil. Instead, it brought stagnation and suffering, the anger of the gods, and finally a rebellion. Kunigaru is a wily bandit who is more concerned about being well liked than with the affairs of the empire until he meets his match, Gia. This free-spirited daughter of a well-regarded family sees greatness within Kuni. Driven by Gia's love and touched by the grace of the common people, Kuni sets out on an unlikely path to heroism and perhaps a daring wager against the gods. Mata Zindu, the last scion of a family of renowned generals, is favored by the gods. Standing seven and a half feet tall, broad-shouldered, and double-pupiled, Mata looks like a hero out of the ancient legends. Determined to reclaim his stolen heritage, Mata catches winds of a revolution and begins a journey to become the greatest warrior of his age. Kuni and Mata become fast friends and they wage separate wars against the vast conscripted armies and silk-draped airships in order to wrest Dara from cruelty. 
I'm excited. And I love books where gods play in the lives of mortals. I find that it raises stakes, makes the story a lot more interesting. And I've, I've seen a couple talks of Ken Liu discussing the Dandelion Dynasty and his aims with it. And so I'm excited to see like what that looks like in execution and if I think he was successful. Not that my opinion really matters, but I'm here to offer it. Next up, we have A Song of Ice and Fire and Related Works. Uh, this one is seven books because I want to read the five books that are out in the series as well as Fire and Blood and A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. So that's why it's seven books total. Uh, a Song of Ice and Fire, we all know what it's about. This is the uh, book series that the Game of Thrones TV show is based on and is the same world of Westeros is also where uh, House of the Targaryen or House of the Dragon takes place as well and that one's more based on the Targaryen history and fire and blood. So this one is an epic fantasy tale. This is one of those series where we've been waiting on the conclusion or the sequel for many a year. Um, but I know that this is I want to say kind of lower fantasy and it's much more about the epic and the vastness of the scope and the, the epic vast scope of the plot and the intricacies of the political situation than it is about like fantastical elements but I know we follow um the events of King's Landing and who is going to be the ruler of the realms and things like that but I've never I don't think well I don't want to say never but I don't know how much I really read the synopsis because I have watched the entirety of the show let's see Long ago, in a time forgotten, a preternatural event threw the seasons out of balance. In a land where summers can last decades and winters a lifetime, trouble is brewing. The cold is returning, and in the frozen wastes to the north of Winterfell, sinister forces are massing beyond the kingdom's protective wall. To the south, the king's powers are failing, his most trusted advisor dead under mysterious circumstances, and his enemies emerging from the shadows of the throne. At the center of the conflict lie the Starks of Winterfell, a family as harsh and unyielding as the frozen land they were born to. Now, Lord Eddard Stark is reluctantly summoned to serve as the king's new hand, an appointment that threatens to surrender, to sunder not only his family, but the kingdom itself. Slipping from a harsh land of cold to a summertime kingdom of Epicurean plenty, A Game of Thrones tells a tale of lords and ladies, soldiers and sorcerers, assassins and bastards, who come together in a time of grim omens. Here, an enigmatic band of warriors bear swords of no human metal. A tribe of fierce wildlings carry men off into madness. A cruel young dragon prince barters his sister to win back his throne. A child is lost in the twilight between life and death. And a determined woman undertakes a treacherous journey to protect all she holds dear. Amid plots and counterplots, tragedy and betrayal, victory and terror, allies and enemies, the fate of the Starks hangs perilously in the balance as each side endeavors to win the deadliest of conflicts. The Game of Thrones. Unparalleled in scope and execution, A Game of Thrones is one of these rare reading experiences that catch you up from the opening pages, won't let you go into the end, and will leave you yearning for more. I'm so excited to read this and then compare the book and the source material to the adaptation. I'm really looking forward to that. Next up, we have the only young adult series on the list, and that is The Aurelian Cycle by Rosaria Munda. First book being Fireborn. So this is a YA fantasy reimagining of the French Revolution, but if there were dragons. So we follow two characters, one who is like an orphan. Well, they're both orphans, but one who is from the slums and one who is the child of the former leaders of this city or place uh but the people don't know that and in this new world order everyone has the opportunity to become dragon riders and so we follow a boy and a girl who are both on the journey to become dragon riders um yeah and so now they are both rising stars in the new regime and war on the horizon one of them must shoot to kill the only family they have left or betray everything he's come to believe in looking forward to this i've heard this is like really epic and really um the scope is really high and it's really intriguing, especially for YA fantasy. I don't read much YA these days, but that is going to change in 2023. So I'm looking forward to reading this and hopefully it is a new favorite. Down to the last three, we've got The Ruin of Kings, which is book one in The Courts of Dragons. This is a five book series. Um, this one is an interesting one. I've heard really great things about this. My bestie loves it as well. And this is a series where people can inhabit other bodies and they can be different people throughout time and all these other it does a lot of time fuckery basically um when destiny calls there's no fighting back so we have this one boy 
who uh, is found out to be like the long lost son of a prince or something like that. But he is also destined to destroy the kingdom to some effect. And so all these different parties are vying for him. Uh, and he is being in it while he's in prison. I think this is like the framing narrative of book one and two. He is being forced to tell his life story. Um, but it also there's someone that's like interjecting and telling like, oh, start at the beginning, start here. That's also telling his story for him. And then I think in book two, a similar thing is happening. But someone else is like telling that story from a different POV. So it says, Kieran grew up in the slums of Cure, a thief and a minstrel son raised on tales of long lost princes and magnificent quests. When he is claimed against his will as a missing son of a treasonous prince, Kieran finds himself at the mercy of his new family's ruthless power plays and political ambitions. Practically a prisoner, Kieran discovers that being a long lost prince is nothing with the, like the storybooks have promised. The storybooks lied about a lot of other things too. Dragons, demons, gods, prophecies, true love, and how the hero always wins. Then again, maybe he isn't the hero after all, for Kieran is not destined to save the empire. He's destined to destroy it. Sounds like we're gonna have some more literary characters. We're gonna have a very intricate and detailed plot, complicated family dynamics. I'm really into it. Next up, we've got the First Law universe, or primarily the First Law trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. This is a trilogy um, and it consists of three books. So I am now gonna be joining the Catch Up Book Club crew, and we are gonna be marathoning or reading the entirety of the 10 books that make up the first all universe starting in january 2023 and ending in early 2024 uh and we will be reading the latest uh, the blade itself before they are hanged and last argument of kings in their entirety this year so i'm excited to be reading this one this is a book that everyone thinks that i'm gonna love it is a grimdark fantasy and joe abercrombie is like at the forefront of grimdark he's lord grimdark um this one i've heard is more character driven than plot driven but the plot picks up later on in the series and this one we follow a torturer a nobleman um a barbarian and conspiracies are going on nobody can really tell you what this is about because apparently there's no plot but you know the vibes i'm down for it and then last but not least actually this is the second of the two YA series this one I've already read but I plan on rereading it and that is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo this is the first book in the original Grisha trilogy which is now the Grisha verse I do plan to read the entirety of this I think it's seven books total so three books in the original trilogy which is now the Shadow and Bone trilogy the two books in the Six of Crow duology and the two books in the Nikolai duology so look forward to a video of me reading the entire Grisha verse very much looking forward to that this one is a Russian inspired fantasy about this world where there's this like blight and this darkness that encroaches upon uh, in this specific area and one day our main character is found out to be a magician who can summon light and like force back the darkness and she is working with the army and um, what is his name? What is he called? This doesn't have like a synopsis on it but she's working with the, I can't, it's like the dark one, the darkling. The Darkling? Is it what it's called? Something like that. And they're working together and there's like stags and all these other things. I really enjoyed this when I read it. I read it in one sitting. It was a three star read and I'm looking forward to reading the entirety of that series. So here are the books and series that I want to marathon this year. Out of, totally this adds up to being 48 books which um, is a very small portion of my reading this past year year 2022 i read over 320 books so i'm not really worried about that and i completed a number of series marathon a number of series so uh, i'm very confident that i can read all of these pending my enjoyment of course uh, some of them i do most of them not most all of them i own all the books in those series and so that's also part of the reason why they're on this list so if you made it to the end of this video let's leave Hmm. let's see about dragon emoji several of these have dragons on the cover have dragons in the synopsis have dragons as a part of their fantastical world and dragons are a system a symbol and system of power in fantasy so thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next one goodbye